Paul Hartley, Darren O'Dea and Jan Venegor of Hesseling all drop to the bench with Big Jan and Stephen McManus not in the side. Gary Caldwell is the captain. Hey Gordon Strachan has made those four changes but two of them for me are really key. Naylor and Brownwell, you'd expect them to come back in but McGeady and Samaras are in my opinion direct response to the lack of penetration against Rangers. So 4-4-2. And at the back, it's strong even without McManus in midfield. Brown brings back the drive they've lacked without him. Samaras is preferred up front because his movement is a much bigger threat than Finnegan Hessling's height to Wilkie and Crow. Well, like Gordon Strachan, Craig Levine also makes four changes. That's from the Aberdeen game last Thursday. Bram Sandaza is back from injury. Lee Wilkie back from a ban. Michael Kovacevic and Craig Conway also come in. Darren Dodd, Andis Schala and David Goodwillie drop to the bench. Paul Caddis can't play because he's on loan from Celtic. Keeper Lucas Zaluska is Celtic bound in the summer. Well, Craig Levine goes with a 4-3-3, which is a good mix of flair and energy, but also some real physical presence. Across the back, they're as big as you get. And much of their success against Celtic this season, I fancy, has been or has had its roots here. And Gomez, Bowman and Swanson, Levine has a trio of young gems in midfield who they never really look out of their depth. Craig Conway, I rate him very highly, and he could make it an uncomfortable evening for Hinkle. And if he does, Sandaza may bag yet another against the hoops. Celtic relinquish control of the title race after losing at Ibrox on Saturday. Rangers' fate is in their own hands now and at their own feet. Roy Keane had a spell here, of course, now the new manager of Ipswich Town. This evening will be far from straightforward for Celtic. Dundee United are the only team they haven't beaten in the SPL this season. The previous three league encounters between these sides all ended in draws, as did the Co-op Cup semi-final, which Celtic eventually won after an epic penalty shootout. Celtic, though, will return to the top of the table if they win tonight. And that would heap a little additional pressure on Rangers when they go to Hibs tomorrow night. Lee Wilkie back to lead out Dundee United after serving a suspension and behind him there, Lucas Saluska, due to join Celtic in the summer. Ironic that his last game for Dundee United will be against Rangers on their final day. Interesting. Yeah, well, Celtic usually find it tough to kill off this side. A lot of quality in it. They're very young. Sometimes that means they have no inhibitions when they come to a setting like this. Going up against the old firm. But for Celtic, it's of course a reaction, isn't it? To old firm defeat. How will they come out here against United? I would imagine Gordon Strachan will want them to be quick and pacey, incisive from the off. That's the one thing they didn't have against Rangers was the penetration. Can they find it tonight? Certainly made the changes anyway. Of course, Dundee United, though, they have belief, don't they? Unbeaten against Celtic this season. Have a chance of Europe, a big chance of Europe. If they can get a result tonight, and you heard Craig Levine in his pre-match interview, very confident indeed, so it's all to play for. When you're ready, Celtic, when you're ready, no rush. Gary Caldwell and co have finally made it. Celtic have had little time to dwell on their defeat at Ibrox. They quickly had to focus on this game. The minutes and the seconds are ticking away fast in the SPL season. Celtic Park may have to endure a nerve-shredding night. After his surprising and some would say baffling omission from the old firm game, Aidan McGeady is back in the team and he may feel he has a point or two to prove. 
if it's possible, and it may not be, Scott Brown will be even more pumped up than usual after missing out on tips to Aberdeen and Rangers through suspension. Fran Sandaza has already scored three times against Celtic this season, so it's a timely return for the Spaniard from a hamstring tweet. And standing in Celtic's way tonight is a man who will be on their side next season. Lucas Salusco will join his Polish pal Arta Boric at Celtic in the summer. Craig Levine is hoping to take Dundee United into Europe. He would really love to have a crack at UEFA's new Europa League. It's only Stuart Dougal's fourth SPL game this season. He's had a few injuries in his final year. The Celtic faithful have piled into Glasgow's East End as usual, but they must be a little worried. Gordon Strachan, though, won't give up on the title until he has to. And there could yet be a twist in the title tale. From the United, though, certainly relish coming up against the old firm, and they usually give them a game, and so, having said that, they haven't beaten Celtic for almost a decade. Paul Dixon, who scored a fabulous free kick here earlier in the season, offside, Craig Conway. Well, Conway will be a big player for United tonight, offers real width, can play either left or right, great cross of the ball. Saturday's old firm defeat was Celtic's first league loss since January, they simply have to bounce back tonight. Ben Lovens again alongside Gary Caldwell at the back with Stephen McManus sidelined. Lee Wilkie returning to the Dundee United team from a suspension. Rangers may have a tricky trip to Easter Road tomorrow night, but this is a hard game for Celtic too, and they've still got to go to Hibs as well. Yeah, Dundee United seem to have the knack against Celtic. I think what will definitely come to the fore in this match is Celtic's organisation at set pieces. Been undone in that department too often against Dundee United's height. Conway. He's probably one of the best crossers of the ball in Scotland. Dixon. It's rolled through to Samaras, preferred to Jan Venegora Hesselink this evening. And back in January, he scored twice against Dundee United here. Well, Samaras does offer something completely different to Jan Venegora Hesselink. Much more movement, will drop deep. Comfortable in possession and likes to run at the defences as well. Different combination with Scott McDonald. There's Boabin. Gomez. Danny Swanson has made a neat little run. Not quite matched by his pass. Scott McDonald. Shinsky Nakamura. You can see what Nakamura is trying to do there, and that is the difference when you have Samaras in your side. You can just thread those little passes through. Of course, you can't do that with the big Dutchman. And that's the, the problem for Dundee United at the back tonight, is going to be the movement of the front two. Incredibly, Celtic are unbeaten in their last 36 games against Dundee United. But there have been a lot of draws lately, including in all the previous meetings this season. Kovacevic, who uh, is usually a cert to come into the side when Dundee United play against either Old Firm team. Yeah, and especially against McGeady, who normally has a good game against them. Gomez, Sandaza, Craig Conway, an early effort. Moritz seemingly had it covered, but it was fairly close. Yeah, it's good play because they bring Sandaza into play. 
And Conway comes in off the left-hand side, and as I said, he can strike the ball with either foot, comfortable right or left. It's not a bad effort. Stephen McManus has had an operation on his knee, so he's having to watch from the stands. And that will be a painful process for him, I'm sure. The kind of guy who wants to be involved in the title running and do his bit. Samaras, Megidi, Krosas, Samaras, Krosas for McDonald. Dixon stepped in, but so did Krosas. Now Hinkle. A really good season. Nakamura. Naylor. Brown trying to tee up McDonald. Bovens. For McGeady. Taking on David Robertson. Decent cross too. Cleared by Gary Kenneth. Scott Brown. Way by Kovacevic, but only to Hinkle. Lovens. Robin leaves it for Wilkie, who gives it to Gomez. Conway. Dixon. Gary Kenneth. Lee Wilkie. McDonald moved in on Dixon and Krosas can now feed Samaras. And Scott McDonald is offside. There was plenty of movement from both sides. Tell you what, that's right on the edge, that one. Very open, Dundee United in midfield, they're all over the place, plenty of movement there, players filling in for each other, no worries in that department. So one thing that uh, Gordon Strachan was complimenting Craig Levine on before the match, is the style that they play, they make sure Dundee United that they are solid in midfield, they get everyone back in, of course they are solid at the back, great height there, but what they do when they get possession is, they make sure they're going forward in numbers. All six foot plus, those guys. Four times in their last five visits to Celtic Park, Dundee United have left with a draw. Celtic know they simply cannot afford to let that happen tonight. Process. McGeady ran into Gomez. David Robertson, Duarbon, and Gomez with some quick fire passes. Kovacevic. Gomez. He'll get a free kick off McGeady. They're right the way in, quick fire passing. They are pinball like in midfield, Dundee United. Lots of smaller players, but great on the ball. Great technique. Well, the football writers and Clydesdale Bank, player of the year. And captain tonight with Jan Venegora Hesseling on the bench and Manus out. It's a terrible error from Naylor, who's quick to apologise, gave it straight to Gomez. Conway. Dixon. An overly fast stick. Really impressed with Dixon this season. Great crosser of the ball. Likes to overlap his midfielder as well. And yet again, has a bit of height about above him as well, about him. And that does add quite a lot nowadays in a full-back position. If you can have someone with a bit of stature there.
Matevich, who is a Swiss under-21 international. Warban certainly felt that as he collided with Naylor. And Garnayan, who was on the books of Ajax. Scott Brown. Gomez pitches the ball off Brown. It's going to run away from Conway. And that will be a popular route down that side for Dundee United. Yeah, certainly with Gomez there. In possession. His favoured left foot will take him out that direction. Conway. to deceive on that occasion. Felt there was a late lunge on him by Nakamura, but not much in it. Krosas. Caldwell. Hinkle. Brown got a kick then from Warburton. And Stuart Dougal will want a word. I didn't think this would be an interesting battle before the match. Bowman against Scott Brown. A little bit late that time. McDonald. Danny Swanson. McDonald. Hinkle. Nakamura. Nayla Caldwell Dixon shrugged off Nakamura Sandaza stretching Belted away by Boritz, although fairly aimlessly Not quite the start that Celtic were looking for Was a reaction to old firm defeat It's not going to be easy tonight against the stubborn Dundee United side we've had problems with this season. Just play the way in patiently to this game. Process for Caldwell. Celtic with just one home defeat this season. It came rather painfully against the rivals Rangers back in August. Warban. Nakamura sticking to Gomez. Here's Lee Wilkie. Gary Kenneth. Gomez. Scott Brown. If anyone can get Celtic going, he can. Scott McDonald now. Brown got himself in the box. Samaras! It's off the foot of the post. It's an escape for Dundee United, and how Celtic could have done with an early goal. Certainly got the crowd going that one. And that all came about the drive of Scott Brown in that midfield area, breaking down the barrier between midfield and attack. Open things up for Scott McDonald. Kenneth in front of McDonald. Brown fed McDonald. Nice ball in, it just takes a touch there from Swanson. And Samaras gets a strike. It's not a great one though, and I think Swanson gets another touch just before it hits the post. Very nearly though.
Caldwell. First house under pressure from Gomez. They were forced to use Boric again. Dixon. Inkle closed in on Conway. And the verdict is a Dundee United throw. Celtic we've so loved to have gone into the lead. Yeah, just that little nick there. Don't know if it changed the direction from Swanson, but that is a golden opportunity really for Samaras early in the match. He obviously hasn't been playing or scoring of late. That would have been a good introduction for him. And go ahead. Strachan taking time out to have a few words with the two Scots. This is what happened to Hinkle. Yeah, just caught by Sandaza there. Head knock. <laughs> so this guy wasn't actually looking then. <laughs> That'd have been interesting if they veered it towards goal. Almost hit him in the back of the head, that one. Early, early. Celtic fans demanding a good start from their side after that old firm loss at the weekend. Hasn't quite happened. I think that will be a route to goal, though, for Celtic, if they persist with it. Brown breaking from midfield, and the movement up front of the two strikers. That time it was Scott McDonald who peeled wide. Swanson. Up against Lovens. David Robertson. Kovacevic barging McGeady out of the way, then. Wilkie. Swanson, Sandaza chasing, Lovens won't let him in. Sandaza made the challenge though, and now Robertson feeds Conway and handball. Greg Levine has transformed Dundee United in his two and a half years in charge. Six team now. And they haven't been that for quite a while. New ball required. Not sure what's wrong with that one. Taking it home later, we'll look at it. Scott Brown, Process, Caldwell. Dixon's throw for Danny Swanson. Gomez. Pinkle beats Conway to it. Scott Brown concedes a throw though. Dixon picked out Swanson. Nudged away by Kosas and Aidan McGeady is running at Dundee United now. Nakamura to his right. Nakamura back from McGeady. David Robertson helped out his defence, and now Danny Swanson has it. Situation that promised 
so much for Celtic, delivered so little ultimately. Marvin turned away from Grossas, now Craig Conway. Conway for Sandaza! Brilliant save from Boric! Dundee United could easily have been in front. Oh, that's just brilliant all round. Conway, excellent early cross. Sandaza picks the header out. And Boric, you had to look lively. Expect him to save this though. It's a good height for him. Still does well. Tale of two Polish keepers tonight. Boric and Zaluska. Sandaza threatening to score against Celtic again. He's already has three times this season. That's a good play. Conway it was. Trying to unlock that Celtic defence. Great early ball in. Hinkle takes over. May bring for the cross. Screwed behind by Lee Wilkie. It's the corner for Celtic and that has encouraged their fans. First corner of the game. There's the cue for potential scorers. Nakamura into the mix. And it's met by Glenn Lovans. Celtic have a crucial lead. And they needed that as a pick-me-up after an old firm defeat. It's a perfect ball in with pace, the right height. He's just asking for a run up. And who is there? Lovins. Such a danger in the opposition penalty box. Always willing to make that run across defenders. And he gets a leap on Wilkie there. He loves a goal, he does. He's in to defend, but I'll tell you what, that's a big goal for Celtic. Celtic often undone by set pieces against. Craig Levine's Dundee United ironically score from one themselves. Glenn Lovins, fourth goal for Celtic. He scored three in the early part of the season, but that's his first since October. And a, a massive wave of relief has swept around this stadium. And it is similar to the type of goal that Celtic regularly this season lose from set pieces with a player getting the leap on a defender and that time what's in favour of Celtic the United defence did look a little bit static Craig Levine's got plenty of height back there but Lovins knows exactly what he's doing it's not the first time he's looked dangerous in that way Levine suggesting that uh, there was a jersey being tugged as the corner came in. I'd be very surprised if there wasn't. <laughs> Usually is in those situations. Well, three or four probably. Kovacevic. Maybe that was a suggestion of why his defence was so static. They were being held. Bobwell takes charge. Didn't give Gomez a sniff. Summer has to to flip that on. McDonald to McKeady. Dundee United could be a bit up again. Offside though, Scott McDonald. Again, this one must be tight. Fantastic play from McGeady. He had to just hold on to it that bit longer though. To allow the room for the pass. Can if not the sort to stay down for long. Let's talk about the height that United have in defence. I don't see any holding of shots at all. Just a good leap. A nice little heads up past the loose cut. Well, but for Boritz, Sandaza might have headed Dundee United in front. Lovens did head Celtic in front.
McDonald. Well, Kenneth has given him a chance. Scott McDonald. But the team has got back quickly. And they're claiming a back pass. McDonald insistent. And it was a back pass. So he was backed up in that argument by a good few thousand Celtic fans. Scott Brown. Lee Wilkie is going to get a yellow card for appending Brown. That's the thing that Brown does, isn't it? it makes defenders have to decide. Do they come to him and tackle? Always risk taking him out. Goal came at the right time for Celtic, the natives were beginning to get a little restless. But there's a fresh look about them now. Naylor, Caldwell! Samaras challenging with Wilkie. Pico given a shot by Swanson. A little bit of that. Caldwell, Samaras. Aidan McGeady, Naylor outside. Might have a shot. Why not? Yeah, up to his old tricks again, McGeady. Just uses Naylor's run there to cut inside. Should really be finding the target though. Lovins, good movement. Scott McDonald there on Jaluska. Is in front of the goalkeeper, but absolutely nothing in it. Really well worked goal. Gomez. David Robertson for Kovacevic. Warburton lost it to McDonald. Here comes Celtic again. He's just overrun that McDonald though. And he made contact with Big Lee Wilkie. He's still down, and Scott Brown takes advantage. McDonald. Well, I think if he knows how much time he's got, Scott McDonald there, he takes a touch. Donald, you'd expect him to at least hit the target though. He takes a touch on his left side, I think. He's better chance of beating Zaluska. Stuart Dougal uh, showing little sympathy for Lee Wilkie here. He's told them you know, to get on with the game. I'll tell you what, that is a bad tackle. It really is from Scott McDonald. He gets the ball and then he leaves his foot up there. He certainly takes Wilkie around the knee area. And I think he's really lucky, McDonald. It's not like him. You wouldn't expect him to do that. He, every chance to pull out of it. A severe warning for Craig Levine from Stuart Dougal. That's told him. He's going to have a pop at the fourth official now. Well, just look at this, Scott McDonald. It's a bad touch, takes the ball away from him. He gets a little touch and then lifts his leg yet again up towards Wilkie. And that's dangerous play. He's a very lucky man. Alan Mio, the fourth official. Wherever he turns. There's a manager waiting to speak to him. It's not the area that Lee Wilkie wants to take a knock. Well documented, the problems he's had. Operations. In his knee area. And 
was just suggesting there that his foot was planted and his knee twisted a little bit with the momentum of McDonald's foot coming through. Almost half an hour on the clock. Celtic a goal to the good, scored by Glenn Lovens. Who could yet uh, face action for a naughty challenge on Morris Hedu at the weekend? Celtic surging forward. McGeady and McDonald just too high for him. McGeady's causing all sorts of problems on that left hand side. Right from the off. Clever ball in. Could have used pace, but opted just to loft it slightly towards the back post. Hey, Wilkie's back on, and hopefully OK. This is exactly what McGeady gives you. He just goes at players. As I said, he just stands that one up. I'm lucky not to find it. Play with green and white on. Good play yet again. Many a Celtic fan gobsmacked that McGeady didn't start at Ibrox. Scott Brown. Dundee United came from 2-0 down to force a draw here in January. Conway. Dixon. Robin. David Robertson gives it back to Gary Kenneth. Naylor. Summer House making Wilkie work. And therefore Zaluska too. Goal certainly has affected Dundee United. They were looking comfortable in possession up until then. I'm sure that Craig Levine was very happy with them. But the goal's changed all that. Giddy for Caldwell. Samaras, Nakamura. Cleared by Dixon. Sandaza on his own. Lovins in his way. Here's Krosas. Naylor. Offside against Scott McDonald again. Well, Lovins is proving up great replacement for McManus not just because of the goal Gordon Strachan looks a little bit <laughs> bemused about but his all-round play has been very good Gary Caldwell <laughs> Kenneth in front of Samaras Conway Stopped by Krosas, seemingly. Dundee United have showed their powers of recovery against Celtic before this season. They need to do so again. Craig Conway sends it short, fools everyone. Conway delivers now. Caldwell meets it. It's a rather careless return from Paul Dixon. Brown. Naylor. McDonald. 
Samaras. Nakamura can release Hinkle on the right if he wants to. He does want to. It's Andreas Hinkle. And Kenneth stops it reaching McDonald. That's got to be infuriating for Scott McDonald though, because Hinkle does not have to get a touch. He gets it first time there. McDonald is in. He takes the touch and that allows Kenneth to get back. Well, they scored from the corner on this side, taken by this man. McDonald in the same place. Irvin's obviously lurking. Nakamura once more sends in a vicious corner and there will be another one on the other side. It's difficult to defend against because Celtic's four big men, all on the line, all running onto it at the same time. And even though you have plenty of stature and height in there, it's never easy. Nakamura given a rousing reception by the fans in that corner. Nakamura, same place more or less. Saluska will get a free kick. Stuart Dougal was watching closely. It wasn't a great punch, but he would have been relieved to hear the whistle. The ball initially swung in, it goes up. Saluska tries to get there. It's unconvincing though. David Robertson, Kovacevic, Nakamura, nicely done for Samaras, Prosas gives it to Magidi, good idea, Naylor's on the overlap, Celtic threatening again, and another corner, off Lee Wilkie this time. That goal's made such a difference to Celtic. Far more confident now. Every reason for Dundee United to fear another Nakamura corner. It's the last few who have caused problems. Caldwell. The interesting thing is that United are going zonal as well in their marking for set pieces. And they were undone by that leap from Lovens, much the same way as Celtic have been undone throughout this season. And they employ the same tactics from corner kicks. Gary Caldwell for Lee Naylor. We are with Rangers at Hibs tomorrow and on Saturday when they're home to Aberdeen from 11.30 on Satanda Sports 1. And it's Celtic's turn to go to Hibs. That's at the earlier time, Sunday, of midday. Danny Swanson. With a little nudge by Brown and then Brown closed in and got the ball, according to the ref. Samaras will keep that in. Samaras, oh, great cross! McDonald and Wilkie both went for it. It's a corner. Well, I think Samaras did a great first half. And coming deep and offering a threat. This time he goes wide, it's a lovely ball in. Good defending as well from Lee Wilkie. Scott McDonald just can't get a touch here. The big defender gets there first, but Samaras. I've not played that often in recent weeks. I think he's had a great first half. 5 0 to Celtic on corners. They quite like it to be 2 0 on goals. It's a familiar scenario in this first half. Nakamura's corner, roughly into the same area. Naylor. Krosas pops it back. 
Robertson clears to Swanson. Conway, Gomez, Swanson. It's going out. In their previous three league meetings this season, Dundee United conceded the opening goal in all three matches but didn't lose any of them. I think for all Celtic's threat after the goal, still just 1-0. They will know this game is not dead yet by a long way. Seoul United, they have proved throughout the campaign that they enjoy coming back from a deficit. I'm not sure if Levine would use the word enjoy though. Done that against Rangers a few times as well. They like to make it harder for themselves against the old firm than the United. Sandaza wriggling free. Conway might get a second bite. He'll have to bring Kovacevic into it. He does. David Robertson. Donald absolutely on his own. Samaras making tracks. McDonald. Dixon aware that only Samaras had moved into the danger area. Samaras chose the wrong run there. McDonald certainly has the pace. Only Wilkie just saw that. Scott Brown, clipped by Gomez. Grossas, McGeady. Skipped away easily from Kovacevic. And his effort bounced off Wilkie. Oh, well, Sandaza capitalising on a mistake from Kosas. Sure what Krosas was thinking of there. Here's Gomez. It nearly proved extremely awkward for Boris. He had to claw it away. Warben. David Robertson. Logan's crashing in. Rosas happy that nothing came of that, that's for sure. Rumours around that Lee Neller might be returning south of the border in the summer. He linked with his old club, Wolves. Kovacevic. Lovens dealing with Sandaza. Half time is fast approaching. Dundee United would love a glimpse of goal before the break. Conway. Shadowed by McGeady. Conway again. McGeady got involved, but Dundee United still looking to create an opportunity. I think Wilkie got that all wrong, though.
We're in the last minute of the 45, but there aren't going to be two minutes added on. Guarman. Samaras muscling in. McDonald. Always going wide. Scott McDonald. They had two choices. The shot was one. I think the better one, though, was out to the right hand side where Nakamura was free. Entitled to have a go, though. Scored a hat trick against Dundee United last season. The referee has added two additional minutes. Two additional minutes will be added. Two more minutes in this first half. Gary Corwell will take this free kick. Magidi. I move superbly away from Kovacevic. Brushed off Nakamura. Naylor. Magidi. Kovacevic recovers that time. Yeah, that usually is a good one. Kovacevic against Magidi, but Magidi has definitely got the upper hand at the moment. Touch from Scott McDonald. Gordon Strachan hoping that Celtic can return to the top of the table this evening with Rangers due at Easter Road tomorrow night and we'll be there for that one. If Craig Lean wants to be back on level terms after the break, might need to become a bigger threat. And sacrifice a few players forward the park moment they're just sitting in midfield and allowing Sandaza to lead the line on his own and it's taken too long for the midfield to get there close to him it's half time Dundee United had threatened a couple of times before Glenn Logan scored midway through the half just as it looked like it might be a really edgy evening in Glasgow's East End Celtic who often can see goals like that scored one like it and that settled them down but Dundee United have come from behind a few times against the old firm in recent seasons. They'll know they're still very much in this game. But at the break, it is Celtic 1, Dundee United 0. I think they're looking at and they're actually quite fortunate just to be one down at half-time. They could be three down because every ball, not only the goal, but every, every corner that's come into that box, Celtic could have scored. Glenn Lovins has the only goal so far, here's the second half. Back to Scott, back to Ian. Dundee United are in the rather familiar position of having to launch a second half salvage operation against the old firm. It seems to happen to them quite a lot. But they are still in with a shout. A slender lead for Gordon Strack inside. Celtic haven't conceded a goal here since Adam Copley scored for Queen's Park in the Scottish Cup in February. Dundee United are going to have to change that if they are to leave Celtic Park with something. But they did come from two down in January here. So it is salvageable. Logan's the goal scorer. Warburton for Swanson. Kovacevic. Gary Kenneth. Process. Samaras. McDonald. Nakamura for Hinkle. Cordwell. header for Kenneth Nakamura 
one is back from Conway, who then fouled him. And it's going to be a yellow card, actually, for Craig Conway. Maybe for a series of offences, yes, indeed. Yeah, Conway just catches Nakamura. Earns himself that yellow. Free kick for Caldwell then. In towards Samaras, way by Wilkin. David Robertson gets a throw off Naylor. What lies with Dundee United now to try and come out from their shape a little bit. Put Celtic under pressure if they want something from this match. Otherwise, you can only see it going one way. Inkle, Samaras. Celtic has scored 18 goals in their last five home games. They are the top scorers in the SPL. Gomez. Sandaza making moves. Sandaza, the angle was awkward and Boritz, as usual, made himself big. That was a real chance. Good play from Gomez to pick Sandaza out. Aidan McGeady. Got a free kick actually for the initial foul on him by Gomez. For all the problems that Dundee United have given Celtic lately, they've only won one of their last 49 games against them. Nakamura making room for the cross, away by Dixon. Swanson's going to be on to that. Conway just about got there in time. Occupied by Lovens. the offender oh, a chance for the United to send the ball in and test the organization of Celtic this time Loki and Kovacevic Kenneth Sandaza David Robertson all in there Sandaza trying to get to it Kerry Kenneth the total miss kick and he really could have punished Celtic then Did cause problems for Celtic, and what a chance there for Kenneth. It was a lame effort from the big defender. And Celtic marking across the six-yard box, and it just falls for Kenneth. Felt the wrong player there. Takes a swing at it. Not one of your shots, that was. He made contact. Nakamura may well pounce on that. Robin with the ball. Conway. Conway hurt. Process just. The referee stops this because he knows he caught him a little bit late. 
Through slice on Cornwick. Celtic face the Edinburgh clubs in their remaining games. Away to Hibs at the weekend and home to Hearts on the final day. United have got to play Hearts yet, and of course their season ends at Tannadice. The home to Rangers, will the title be won at Tannadice for the second season running? Celtic hope not. Hinkle, McDonald, Scott Brown takes over, Samaras, it's in, it may have been diverted in, but Georgios Samaras will claim it, and Celtic are sitting pretty now on a 2-0 lead and ready to go back to the top of the table. And for the looks of Zaluska in goal, this must have taken a fairly big deflection. Good play again from Brown. Tenacious as ever, driving forward. And it looks like he maybe hits the back of Lee Wilkie. As he faced Samaras there. Well, it's actually in front of Lee Wilkie that left the goalkeeper with absolutely no chance. Nice little back heel from Scott McDonald. He feeds the striker and Samaras had a very good first half. Starts the second half well. Well, Samaras will claim it as his. He scored twice against Dundee United here in January, but that's only his third goal since that double. Well, a tad unlucky for United, but they really haven't dealt with midfield players, Celtic midfield players driving forward, particularly Scott Brown from that midfield area in the first half, five or six occasions that the Celtic midfielders allowed plenty of space to drive into those channels. That's what caused it. Well, when they met here in that January game, Dundee United were 2 0 down with half an hour to go and scrambled a point. Celtic in no mood to let that happen again, though. Their need is urgent tonight. And they look to improve their goal difference. Hinkle going a long way. Corner. There's absolutely no doubt for me that Dundee United will change things around very quickly now. Hinkle gets himself in there and ends the corner kick. And Levine and Peter Houston discussing changes. Nakamura. McGeady able to wriggle away. David Robertson blocked it though. After McGeady left, Swanson standing. Celtic looking to return to the SPL summit. Good for such a return. Three goals better off than Rangers on the goal difference front. Should it come down to that? Nagidi. The next goal is going to make a massive difference. Naylor whips it in. And Kenneth made contact. Saluska reacting well to deny Scott Brown. That's good play again. Samaras comes deep. Allows Naylor to put that ball in. Great cross it was. Good reaction from Scott Brown even to get it on target. <laughs> David Goodwillie and Andis Schala are going to come on in a double change for Dundee United. They started the last match against Aberdeen. Goodwillie has scored in his last two games Swanson Sandaza Forrest guarding his near post it's a nice little move good ball there from Swanson difficult though for Sandaza there to get it across Boric 
was never really going to test him at the near post. Offside, Scott McDonald. Craig Levine eager to make his changes. Charlotte is going to come on for Sandaza. Dixon. That's not bad. And David Robertson has snatched a goal back for Dundee United. And all of a sudden there's a feeling of deja vu about this. Oh, that's incredible. What a cross from Dixon down that left-hand side. Unbelievable ball. Look at the bend he gets on the pace. And he picks out Robertson. And this would have been a game plan from Craig Levine. That's why Robertson's playing that right-hand side. To be fed from Dixon and get himself into the back stick. And he makes no mistake with the finish. It's not easy, this. The ball's coming down. It's on the half volley. Puts the pressure back on Celtic a little bit. Well, they're still bringing Andis Charlotte on, but they've changed the man who was going to go off. Sandaza is still there. Danny Swanson has made way. So many times Dundee United have come from behind against the old firm to sneak a result. And Dundee United have also changed their mind on bringing on David Gawilly for now. Conway. Dixon, who set up the first goal, looking to set up the second. Here's Robertson, the scorer. Blue to the beauty. And it's Charlotte, who I think was offside anyway. Real chance here. Just tries to find that back stick. An early introduction to the action for Charlotte. And Levine, he's seen this all before from his side. Just when it looked all over, but what about that ball? And Lee Naylor was sleeping. He didn't check over his shoulder. And Robertson was coming in. by Samaras not quite so comfortable now for Gordon Strachan things can change so quickly in football and the United never ever lie down especially when they're up against the old firm David Robson's goal and it certainly sparked them and here's Gomez and he's flashing wide they do always say, don't they, what a difference a goal makes. Boric, not very chuffed with the way this opening came. Gomez gets the strike on, but well off target. Celtic are going to bring on Paul Hartley shortly. Half an hour to go. High tension has returned to Celtic Park. Celtic weren't in the comfort zone for long. Hartley is going to replace Krosas. Dixon, Com uh, Charlotte. We have a match again, don't we? Make it just that little bit further up the park now. A little bit higher line. Again, he's got a free kick. And United hoping Lightning does strike twice after they rescued a draw when they were 2-0 down here in January. 
been over for Mark Protas. Paul Hartley coming off in his place. Hartley started the last couple of games with uh, Scott Brown suspended. He did score against Dundee United at the start of the season. More likely tonight to help protect what Celtic have. A slender lead for now. A poor free kick from Lee Naylor. Sliced into touch by Lovens. Gomez. Scott Brown. Hartley. Showing immediate determination, but so too was David Robertson, and here is Sam Daza. Robertson. Move and set up Warburn on the volley. What an opportunity! Well, it is a great opportunity, but a difficult one. It's coming down on the volley. All he's got to do there is cushion it back in. He goes for power, Bowman, but I think if he'd just gone for a little bit more accuracy, it would have tested Boris. Attempts and Celtic and on target too. What's even more impressive about the nature of United's comebacks this season is the fact that they are such a young side. Certainly put together a team with real spirit. Novacevic pings one in. Offside flag will go up against Lee Wilkie. Venegor of Hesseling warming up for Celtic. You can see they're clearly offside. Lee Wilkie. Always likes to venture forth though. A great kick from Boritz, but fortunately for him, it found Hinkle. Samaras and Wilkie both going for it. Gomez gets a free kick. Dundee United, the only team in the SPL that Celtic have yet to beat this season. Three draws in the other league games between them this season and a draw two in the Cold Cup semi when Celtic eventually won on penalties. Totally wasting it. That was a waste. Kenneth and Wilkie both in the box. Nagiri. Thomas got the ball. There isn't much of a protest from Nagiri, also from the fans. Robin has to get himself out of the little hole then. Lee Wilkie. I think he was staying composed. Here's Sandaza. And onside Shala. Kovacevic. It's still nil-nil at Petrovic, by the way, between Amberdeen and Hearts, but Hearts are down to ten men. 
And Marius Zaliukas has been sent off for the fourth time this season. Gary Kenneth's long throw. Wilkie can't get near it. Samaras cleared it. Blobben with a bit of go of it that time. Hinkle tearing away. McDonald. Brown. Naylor. Celtic fans sweating a bit at the moment. They want another goal. McGinney's cross though will be claimed by Zat uh, by Zaluska. Guarban. His mistake. Allowed Brown to give it to McDonald. And now Samaras. Nakamura making a run. And here he is. Nakamura! Fine save from Zaluska. The man who will be a Celtic player next season. Vital save that one, top class, great movement from Nakamura to over that ground. Into the last quarter of this match, Celtic doubled their lead but it didn't last too long. David Robertson hauling Dundee United back into contention. Robin. Kovacevic. Gomez. Conway. Kovacevic. David Robertson let it go, not his best idea. Scott McDonald, Samaras. This is handball, I think, against Boabin, even though everyone seems to think the game has continued. Well, it hasn't been a dull encounter between these sides this season. This one's living up to it. Levine's Dundee United. Once again, giving it a right old go against the defending champions. Aidan McGeady. Looking for a return from Brown. Conway intervened. Gomez. Fair bit of room in the middle of the park. Conway. David Robertson. Brown. Nakamura. Hinkle overlapping. No surprise there. And Hinkle will get a corner. Less nervous for Celtic. They won't want to be clinging on in the closing stages. Nakamura, another decent corner, Lee Wilkie able to steer it away. Nakamura quickly returns it, and Wilkie's on the end of it once more. Naylor. We'll keep meeting everything. There's a magnet and there he is. <laughs> it's a 
to be a return from Scott McDonald. Neither did well to keep it in. He's secured another throw. McGeady. Naylor. Bukacevic. <laughs> Kicked his own man, Gomez. He's done to United. Edge away, and McDonald's foul will give him a free kick. Good play again from Gomez. He's coming on to a fine match now. Much more of the play in this second half. Jan Federer of Hesling is called back. Conway. Robin for Kovacevic. Away by Brown, but only to Kovacevic again. Gary Kenneth. Up towards Sandaza. Away by Lovens. Kovacevic for Gomez. He's done really well, Morgara Gomez. He's got a free kick right on the edge of the box too. Such confidence in his ability, Gomez, just to run at players. Great footwork. And it's a yellow card for Glenn Lovens. Just teased Lovens into that. Free kick for Dundee United. Paul Dixon scored from a free kick here in January to spark Dundee United's recovery then. And he's over it with Conway. Yeah, not too far off this position. Sure, Boris will remember that. Dixon tried to run another free kick, but as well as that might have worked on the training ground, it was a complete shambles there. And Saluska will boot that back. Benagora Hesselink is going to replace Samaras imminently, but here's Conway. Sandaza needs to get himself in the middle to give Conway an option. Free kick. Probably didn't think so. Another anxious moment, this, for Celtic. A major free kick for Craig Conway to send in, but Hartley cleared it. Gomez. He will kick. throw and Dundee United are raging. I don't think the assistant referee actually knew. No he didn't because he got a drop. Brokey's in there. McGeady too. Brokey certainly fancied his chances for that one. Well it would have given uh... Gary Kenneth, if you suspect a long throw, opportunity. Anyway, in Celtic's way, Giorgio Samaras departs to be replaced by Jan Benigora Hesselink, who didn't score for much of the season, but has got four in his last six outings. I think Samaras played well. Just looks like he's tired slightly. Hasn't had much football lately. Benigora Hesselink gets a free kick.
Celtic goal now would certainly be a calming influence. Benagora has something won it. Scott McDonald. Gary Caldwell happy to head it out. Scott Brown quickly in on Gomez. Nagidi. Hartley charging about. That's a little loose though. Kovacevic up towards Charlotte. It's going to get nervy for Celtic if it's not already. A fraught finale beckons. Dixon's free kick. Robin struck it well, his best effort of the night. It's a long ball. It comes back, down and Bob, and it's on his own. Thought it saw that one all the way up. And Celtic know they cannot afford any more slip-ups. Brown. Needlessly involved with Kovacevic. And United are going to throw on David Goodwillies soon, who's scored in the last couple of games. He's lively. Willie is going to take the place of Sandars, are we here? It just shows it is a huge match as well for United this one. header Scott Brown and therefore some Danza can chase it Lovens aware Conway it's fairly frantic out there but this is very tidy from Celtic Benagora Hesseling and Nakamura Hartley Lovens staying strong. <laughs> David Robertson, Dundee United's goal scorer. Ten minutes left. David Goodwoody came on and snatched the late equaliser against Hibs. Not so long ago, he's on for Fran Sandaza with orders to continue his recent scoring spree. Three goals in his last five games. It's come off Venegora Hesselink. Robertson. The race for the title continues tomorrow at seven. We are at Easter Road for Hibs against Rangers. As it stands, 
Rangers will be back in second place going into that. And there's Stunder United have a late offering. Celtic Park. They wouldn't be surprised if they did the way they go about their games against the Old Firm. Sure. United certainly have a number of attacking players on the park. Robertson, Charlotte, Conway, Good Willie. They can all get forward. I'm starting to see a little bit more of possession again. Got it down by Charlotte for Good Willie. Hartley able to clear it. But here's Gomez. Willie's onside. Can't get his shot away though. Took a bit too long, perhaps. Yeah, it was neither a shot or a cross. He should have come up with one of them. Every chance of a long throw, although Conway is available for a short one, should uh, Kenneth prefer? He does prefer. Conway for Gomez. He's had an outstanding season. Conway's cross. Cleared by Caldwell. And the United keeping the pressure on. Dixon, who provided their goal. With a lovely cross, which David Robertson finished off. Gomez into the mix. Wilkie's up there. Kenneth. Hovens across. Goal kick. Wilkie up there, the extra height. Lovins did well to close down Kenneth. Willow Flood, who spent a season and a half on loan at Dundee United, is going to face his former teammates for the closing stages. Hasn't been seen much since his move to Glasgow. Away by Lovens. McGeady. Donald kept it in. McGeady alongside. Lovely turn from McGeady. But his centre was duly dispatched by Lee Wilkie. Tense times for all concerned. Just over five minutes remaining. Celtic went into a 2-0 lead and... Well, they probably didn't think that was that against Dundee United, because it never is. Should see Nakimura's being a place. Willow Flood will come on to add some steely resistance. Against his former club. It's only his fourth appearance for Celtic and two of them have been against Dundee United. Conway, Flood for McDonald, and it barges right past Gary Kenneth, good luck, game for, as ever, Scott McDonald, Wilkie, up to Goodwilly, Dixon, not been as good a second half for Celtic as the first they did get that second goal the deflection of Lee Wilkie from Samaras but since United scored they've really come back at the home side 
Benagora Hessling helped it on to McDonald. Willow Flood takes over. Flood for Benagora Hessling. Hartley have got himself into the box, but it is a corner. Nakamura to take this, so his replacement will have flood will. Will have flood delivers. Fenagora has a links header straight at Zaluska. Hinkle covering. Gomez. Napped away from him by Willow Flood. Pleading for a free kick. Stuart Dougal disinterested. Justin Brown putting himself about. As usual, as Dundee United make a change, Sean Dillon. Substitution so swap for United Michael Kovacevic. Only a few minutes left, but it'll probably feel a lot longer for Celtic. Unless they can score again to relieve the pressure, relieve the tension. Gomez. Good Willie. Good challenge by Gary Corbett. in this game, I can't imagine there'll be that much, but we'll soon find out as a few nails get bitten to bits. Way by Lee Naylor and now McGeady. Nicely done, but then he knew that he would bring it under control. Oh, Zaliska. Oh, unfortunate. of Scott McDonald to make it hard for him. Conway. It is a free kick for Dundee United. We're in the last minute of the 90. Dixon. Dixon allowed to keep going, even though Brown tried to hold him up. Just too much on it for Conway, much to his dismay, and his. Well, they just haven't been able to test Boric as much as they'd have liked in the last third. period of stoppage time we'll know how much soon Warburn is going to be three minutes they need to see this out they need to hang on to return to the top of the table from the United chasing a place in Europe the other two contenders meeting at Pitodri this evening. Goal lost there. Samayuka sent off again for Hearts. Gary Kenneth with a hit and hope. Gary Corwell. Gomez. Hartley. Flood. Donald, Scott Brown, Aidan McGeady, able to cross it, headed away by Paul Dixon. 
good move from Celtic and more importantly possession right now they just like to see this out down this end Gordon struck inside almost back on top of the SPL Kendrick can't really uh, bring himself to watch down there at the moment but at least Celtic have got the ball where they want it minute and a half or so to negotiate and then it will be over to Rangers tomorrow night at Easter Road where Hibbs will have a few players coming back from suspension yeah, seeing this out rather well Zaluski furious with him because they need to get the ball up the other end. Yeah, it's working out well for Celtic this. Beautiful possession. Able to keep the ball. Just run time out. time Scott Brown some people want to hear the whistle when this goal kick is taken they might well be few thousand whistles around this famous old ground now but Stuart Dougal's one is the one that matters and he has blown it now it was more uncomfortable than it might have been for Gordon Strack inside but they saw it out, they held on, they've beaten Dundee United by two goals to one, and they're back on top for now. And the essential viewing continues tomorrow night. We're Easter Road for Hibs against Rangers, with Rangers looking to get uh, back on top from 7 o'clock. Then they are home to Aberdeen Saturday from half past 11. Celtic go to Easter Road Sunday from 12 noon. And Celtic needed this tonight. Giorgio Samaro scored with the help of a hefty deflection of Lee Wilkie, and it proved to be the winner. They're back on top of the league. It's up to Rangers now. Live goals Thursday night from San Antonio. The first round of the Valero Texas Open from 8 o'clock Satanta Golf. In the SPL tonight, Celtic got the job done. They ran the show in the first half. Giorgio Samaras saw that early effort coming back off the inside of the post. This was the only first half threat from Dundee United. A good save from Artur Boric to keep out Fran Sandaza. Other than that, it was all Celtic. They took the lead through Glenn Livens. Gordon Strachan looked surprised. And Lee Wilkie was almost surprised there. It almost crept in. What a big chance. This was early second half for Gary Kenneth to square the game. What happened next? Well, this. The Samara shot deflected off Lee Wilkie. The Luska with no chance, and that was 2-0. This was 2-1. Dixon's cross turned in by David Robertson, and that made things very interesting and twitchier than Gordon Strachan would have liked. But 2-1 it finished, and three points for Celtic. At Pataudry, Aberdeen nil, Hearts nil, in a match with uh, big implications in the battle for European places. Uh, Hearts finished with 10 men. Marius Zaliukas sent off for the fourth time this season. In terms of the placings in the top six, it looks like this. Uh, Celtic have 18 now. They're back on top meantime, ahead of Rangers game at Easter Road tomorrow night. Hearts 55 with their point at Pataudry. Dundee United stay on 53. Aberdeen move a point closer to United. They have 50 now in that chase for the Europa League. Let's hear from Dundee United manager Craig Levine with Stuart Lovell. Well, Craig, you said you would come here and have a go, try and win the match. You certainly did that tonight. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately we missed too many chances. And uh, I'm a great believer in if you, if you come to Celtic Park and make 
half a dozen good chances, you really need to take more than one. It seems that there's a great belief in your team because at 2-0 down, a lot of people would have thought the game was over, but five minutes later, David Robertson popped up with an important goal, and certainly after that, you had Celtic under a lot of pressure. Yeah, well, I said to the lads in the second half, I mean, I think Nakamura, Lucas made a good save from Nakamura, but apart from that, I don't think we're under pressure in the second half. And we had some great opportunities, you know, and, and, and you have to score. I mean, that's it. When, when you get opportunities, you've got to score. And I think if we had it done, we had Celtic on the ropes, um, we might have, might have won the match, but, you know, maybe that's why Celtic have won the championship the last three uh, seasons in a row, because they've got resilience. How vital would a point have been to Dundee United's season? Three would have been vital. <laughs> um, well, I believe that Hearts drew with Aberdeen up there, didn't they? So, I mean, we're still. What I said at the start of uh, this run of games was I wanted to be within touching distance of Hearts come the game at Tynecastle, and we are. So, you know, I can't ask for any more than that. Uh, the important thing now is that uh, we go to Tynecastle on Saturday and do ourselves justice. Of course, you look at your final two games. They're very difficult on paper, of course, but you play away at Tynecastle on Saturday, home to Rangers the following week. And I guess you feel you win those two games, that's third place for sure. That's the way I look at it, yeah. And I think uh, you're in, you want to be in the top half of the table, so you're playing those games. I mean, that's where we want to play, that's where we want to be every season. We want to be playing at Celtic Park with three games to go, with it meaning something for both teams. So... And we'll handle it, you know, 100% we'll handle it. And, and you know, I'm going to Tynecastle on Saturday uh, with a group of players that I'm extremely proud of tonight, the way they played. And, uh, you know, a similar type of performance will delight me on Saturday. Thanks for your time, Craig, and we wish you well in your final two matches. Thank you. We'll try to get a word with uh, Gordon Strachan, the Celtic manager as well, before we go. A big win for Celtic tonight, 2-1, uh, and they go back on top of the table for 24 hours at least. We'll also hear from these two uh, more immediately. Richard Goff and John Hartson with me as we look back on the, the big moments from the game. This is the only goal of the first half scored by Glenn Lovins, and you might question the way it was defended, but it was a great ball in, and he wanted that header, Richard, badly. Yes. Good, uh, good run by the central defender, Leuvens, but uh, questions of Lucas, maybe it's, I mean, he's only knocking in from about maybe four or five yards. Maybe he could have come for it. Good goal from Celtic's point of view, he's attacked it really well, but from Dundee United's point of view, bad one to lose defensively. Dundee United were a different proposition in the second half to the first, and five minutes after the restart, the big chance, and I wonder how this game would have gone, John, had that gone in. Well, it falls to the wrong man, uh, Rob, unfortunately. It falls to the big uh, left-footed centre-half, Kenneth. And he just never really hits it clean enough, does he? He just, uh, just swings his foot at it. But uh, they were absolutely outstanding in the second half, Dundee United. You know, they were very, very unlucky not to take nothing away tonight from Celtic Park. A bit of luck helps when you're challenging for a championship, which is, which is the position Celtic are in at the moment. And this took a major deflection of Lee Wilkie from Georgios Samaras, which left Zaluska with not a hope. Yeah, not much chance for this one. Takes a bad deflection here. But like John says, the difference between Dundee United in the first half and the second half was unbelievable, especially once they went 2-0 down. They pushed Conway on to, to go up front with Sandasa and it made a huge difference. And after from this goal on, we, we actually thought it could have been maybe 3 or 4-0 going on Celtic, but the Dundee United came right into the game and uh, actually could have ended up winning the game. As Craig Levine rightly said, if they'd taken their chances, they would have won the game. Yeah, this made a big difference because just a few minutes after Samaras had scored his second, the second, I should say, for Celtic, uh, Dixon's cross, David Robertson's finish, and suddenly John with a game on. Yeah, we did, and it was a fantastic ball in from Dixon and Robertson. Look at his run here, just perfectly arriving at, right in the back. He's got confidence in his left back, Dixon. Swing it in. Gets in the behind Naylor, the cross beats Boric, and it's a really good finish on a tight angle. But the problem with Celtic had from here, Rob, there was, what, half an hour left on the clock? Sort of 28 minutes left, and I think what they never did was hold on to 2-0 for long enough because they give themselves a little bit of zoo in the end. And six minutes after that, Dundee United created another great chance to make it 2-2. It was Prince Boabin, this time, who had a flash at it with his left boot, uh, and he failed to hit the target. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, in the second half, we were just sitting here talking about it. Wabin and uh, Gomez, Gomez yeah. were, were fantastic in the second half. I mean, completely outplayed the Celtic midfield and played really well. But I think it was definitely the injection of Conway, just pushing a little bit further forward and giving the Celtic back for real problems that caused all of the change in the play. And you've just got to hit the target with that one. 
We didn't see an awful lot of Celtic in the second half as an attacking force, but uh, Zaluska, Celtic band in the summer, of course, produced a terrific stop uh, to keep him out here, John. Yeah, well, Sam Ross does brilliant day, delays it and delays it, perfectly weighted pass. Nakamura, you'd put your life on him scoring there, but Zaluska stands up really big and strong. And if anybody thought there was a theory about Zaluska playing tonight, this, that and the other about play for Dundee United, he's now a Celtic player. I think he proved it there. It's a great save, but I, I don't particularly think it's 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 a night to uh, to look at you know performances, you know individually, collectively. I just think it's about results. And Celtic showed in that second half tonight they were playing like a team with a lot of pressure on their shoulders. But they've come up trumps. They've done their business. And the Rangers have got to go and do it tomorrow. Celtic have done what they had to do tonight, and let's pick up three points. Glenn Lovin, Scott Man of the Match, here he is. Well, Glenn, after Saturday's result, you knew only a win would do tonight. You must be delighted to have got the job done. Uh, yeah, of course we we uh, we're happy with the three points, and um, by times we played some uh, great football. But uh, yeah, if you see the game after two 0 it should be should be over. But we made itself a bit too hard in the end. Was it a nervous last 30 minutes defending? Because certainly Dundee United had you under a fair bit of pressure. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, as we know, uh, last time uh, we played them, um, we were 2-0 up and we drew 2-2 two, uh, two each. So, uh, yeah, we knew we had to be uh, strong in the end to, uh, to defend the three points. So you weigh up the situation now. That win tonight puts you back on top of the table. You'll be watching tomorrow night's match with interest when Hibs take on Rangers. And then, of course, you'll be feeling you've got to win your last two games to give yourself a chance of the title. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, we're... Uh, depending on uh, on uh, them to to lose points, and we have to make sure we uh, yeah we win our, our next two games, and um, I don't think it's over yet. Um, the pressure's on them now, so let's see what happens tomorrow. Crucial goal from yourself tonight. You managed to get the opening goal, and you've popped up with a few goals this season. Crucial at crucial times for Celtic. Yeah, uh, well, that's always good to help the team out. Uh, so I'm I'm. My main thing is to defend, but now and then I get a goal, uh, yeah, with a free kick or, or a corner. So, uh, well, I'm happy uh, uh, it brought us to three points today. Well, your goal and a fine defensive display has got you the Clydesdale Bank man of the match. Well done. Thank you very much. It ended up a nervous night for Celtic, which it probably shouldn't have been uh, in the end. But they got the job done, John, and, and, and now they hand over the pressure to Rangers, yeah. don't they? Exactly right. I think they've got two tough games to go. They play both the Edinburgh clubs now. They play... Uh, Hibs um, at the weekend and then finish you with heart. So what Sally need to do is just, as I say, it's not particularly about performances. Um, Gordon always likes his team to play well, of course, the supporters. I think you just sensed it tonight. There was an edge in us about the crowd as well. I think they would just be delighted with the three points. We're off to Edinburgh tomorrow night as the story continues. Hibs against Rangers from 7 o'clock, Satanta Sports 1, and then we're into the weekend. Rangers Aberdeen at Ibrox, Saturday from half past 11, Sunday from 12 noon, it's Hibs Celtic. Thanks a lot to Richard, thanks to John as well. It's a fascinating finale to this SPL season and just for now it's Celtic who are back on top from all of us. Bye for now.